Challenge, we're ready to rock. Are you? Huh? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Whew, it has been quite a season. It is down now to these final two teams. We are so proud and happy to put a spotlight on some of the great academic competitive work going on in our viewing audience. And really, uh, we have two well coached, well drilled, very, very bright players, great teams. We can't wait to get started. So let's begin. Let's meet them. First, the Raiders from Flushing. Thomas. Matt, Team Captain Ben, and Amit. And the Novi Wildcats, Sudarshan, Ani, Team Captain Andrew, and Stephanie. These are, like I said, fantastic teams. I'm the host, Jimmy Rhodes. And you know, I failed to mention as we've been winding our way through the bracket that Novi is the returning champion. So congratulations on a sustained run of excellence. Good luck to everybody in here as we begin this final match. First round is 20 questions. It's 20 questions. They're toss-ups. If I hear a buzzer, I stop reading. If I get an in incorrect response, I pick it up from approximately where I left off for the other team. A chance to pick up those 10 points on the rebound. No penalties. Let's begin. They have co-written all their screenplays, which reflect their offbeat blend. Uh, Novi, Andrew. Cohen Brothers. Joel and Ethan, to be exact. Yes. <laughs> they are found only in Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. What name is given to any of three living species of egg-laying mammals? Uh, Novi, Stephanie. Uh, platypus. Uh, not what we're looking for. Flushing. Uh, Rebuzz, please. We didn't clear. Amit. Monotremes. That is correct. That is the name. The primary cause is the difference between annual temperature trends over land and sea. The most prominent examples occur in Africa and Southern Asia. What are these major wind systems Novi, Andrew. Trade winds. Now what we're looking for, continuing the question for flushing. Major wind systems that seasonally reverse direction. Ben. Jet streams. No, we're looking for monsoons. Continuing, name the Hungarian-born American journalists, journalist whose will established annual awards for achievements. Uh, flushing, Ben. Pulitzer. Joseph Pulitzer, that's right for journalism, literature, and music in the United States. Moving on. When President Washington ordered 13,000 troops to the area, the event established the authority of federal law within the states. What was this uprising in Western Flushing, Matt? The Whiskey Rebellion? That is correct, well done. As a doctor in Southern France, he gained a reputation for his innovative treatment of plague victims in the 16th century. Name this French physician and astrologer who modern readers claim predicted such events. Flushing Ben. Nostradamus. I knew you were going to say that. That's correct. Yes. The 1797 XYZ affair was a diplomatic incident between the United States and what country? Flushing Matt. France. Oh, France, yes. France, France. Yeah. The primary use for iron pyrite is as a source of sulfur in the production of sulfuric acid, but because of its appearance, it has what? Flushing, Ben. Fool's gold. That's the more common name. Well done. The surname is the same. One was the first would-be presidential assassin whose guns misfired when he aimed at Andrew Jackson. The other is the English author of Lady Chatterley's Lover. Uh, Flushing Ben. D.H. Er, Lawrence. Lawrence is the surname they share, yes. And that would be Richard and D.H. respectively. And actually, continuing the thread, Richard Lawrence was the first would-be presidential assassin who on March 30th, 1981, was the most recent. Uh, Novayani. Hinckley. John Hinckley, yes. <laughs> Coincidentally, both men were deemed insane and institutionalized. We are halfway through the round of 20 questions. Let's move on. Handel wrote them, so did Haydn and Mendelssohn. What are these large-scale musical compositions for solo voices, chorus, and orchestra? Novi, Stephanie. Symphony. Not where we're looking for. Flushing, chance to pick it up. Ben. Oratorios. That is correct. 
You could hit a homer on this one. In integral calculus, what name is given to the rule that describes a process for approximating definite integrals by substituting arcs of parabolas? No, Vianni. Raymond? Not what we're looking for, continuing the question for flushing. By substituting arcs of parabolas for short arcs of a curve. Mmm, donuts. Simpson's rule is what we're looking for, hence the Homer thing. Otto von Bismarck was known as the Iron Chancellor. What British Prime Minister was known as the Iron Lady? Uh, Novi, Stephanie. Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher, that's correct. Please name the two choice, uh, yeah, please name the two choices that Hawaiians had in the first year they were able to vote for president. Uh, Flushing Matt. Um, Eisenhower, oh, no. No, not what we're looking for, so it's a chance to pick it up, Novi. Uh, Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy. Moving on, Barack Obama comes to the presidency from Illinois. Name two other presidents to have ties to the state. One was born there, and the other is buried there. Uh, Novi, Sudarshan. Um, Lincoln and Ulysses S. Grant. Those are not the two we're looking for. Chance to pick it up, Flushing. Ben. Lincoln and Garfield. No, it was Abraham Lincoln and Ronald Reagan are the two we were looking for. Okay, five questions remain in the round of 20 questions. It is native to South America. Perhaps that's why in 1947, Thor Heyerdahl, uh, yeah, Heyerdahl chose this wood to construct the Contiki. No, by Andrew. Balsa wood. Balsa wood's it, yep. <laughs> they sailed that Contiki from Peru to Polynesia. Okay, moving on. They flourished in Europe from the 11th to the 16th centuries. What were these associations of craftsmen or merchants? Novi, Sudarshan. Guilds. Guilds it is, yes. What do we call any number of the form uh, A plus BI? Uh, where are we? Flushing Amit. Complex numbers. Now what we're looking for, continuing the question for Novi. Uh, form A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers, I is the square root of negative one, and B is not zero. Uh, Sudarshan. Imaginary. That is correct. It is Indonesia's fourth largest island and contains more than half its population. The remains of Homo erectus found there in 1891 indicate that the island was occupied 560,000 years ago. What island is it? Uh, Novi, Stephanie. Java. Uh, I like their coffee, yes, that's right. <laughs> One question remains in the round of 20 questions, players. Much of how we view the Wild West can be attributed to this man. His more than 100 works, mostly Formula Westerns, that can... Uh, Flushing Ben. Louis L'Amour. That is correct. Wow. They have sold more than 300 million copies in 20 countries. Impressive. And let's take a look at a couple of very impressive scores. This is a hotly contested game. Novi, you currently trail with a score of 70. Flushing, you have 90, but this is still anybody's contest. Andrew, I'm going to ask you to listen to these four categories of the 4x4. Four four. You can consult with your teammates, decide whether you'd like to pay, play or pass from among them. They are stage classics. Where in the world is Jimmy? Political corruption and female firsts. Take a moment to consult and let me know. Too short a female first, I think. I think we could do any of them except the first one. Political corruption. You want to know. Andrew? Political corruption, we'll play. You're going to play, and you're going to play in the category of political corruption. Reminder that all final answers need to come from Team Captain Andrew. You can consult up to the bell. So, Andrew, in consultation with your teammates, please identify the following uh, in the category of political corruption. Organized in 1789, it was the Democratic Party Executive Committee in New York City whose power was strongest in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall. That is correct. Nice. In 1868, this man became leader of Tammany Hall and controlled political patronage. It's not Fox, is it? Andrew? Fox. I'm sorry? Fox. No, we're looking for Boss Tweed. Third question in the political, political corruption category. This Harper's Weekly cartoonist who created the Republican elephant and the Democratic donkey helped bring Boss Tweed down through a series of editorial cartoons. Nast. Thomas Nast. Very good. As the enormously popular mayor of New York, from 1933 through 1945, he fought Tammany Hall corruption and introduced myriad reform programs. George Clinton. He might be. Let's try it. Clinton. 
Uh, Fior Fiorello LaGuardia is who we're looking for. LaGuardia. Okay, uh, that is political corruption. Three categories remain for you to choose, uh, from which to choose, Ben. They are stage classics. Where in the world is Jimmy and female firsts? Take a moment to consult and let me know. We'll take where in the world is Jimmy. I wish I knew. Uh, <laughs> please answer the following about my recent travels. And the funny thing is I don't remember anything about these. Uh, <laughs> I am on Salisbury Plain in South England at sunrise in midsummer, wondering who put these things here. What am I looking at? Stonehenge. Yeah, I remember it well. That's right. Yeah, Stonehenge. Yeah. I took snapshots with druids. It was cool. Everybody knows that New Orleans is built below sea level. I am at the other place in the United States that is below sea, le sea level, and man, am I hot. Where am I? Death Valley, California. Yeah, and it's no fun. I'm telling you. Okay, and now I'm really cold. I've come to this small town to look for the mayor, only to find that she left in December of 2006 to become governor. Where am I? Wasilla, Alaska. That is correct, yes. Okay, now I've returned to England to see if London Bre Bridge is indeed falling down, and instead I discover that it was taken down. Now where do I have to go to see it? Ben? The British Museum. Uh, Lake Havasu, Arizona is what we're looking for. And uh, can't wait to see my photos. All right, Ben, we're going to stay with you. Consult with your teammates and decide which of the two remaining categories, female firsts and stage classics, you would like to assign to Novi. We'd like to give them stage classics, please. We'll come back to you for female firsts. Andrew, in consultation with your teammates, please identify the classic American play from these descriptions. This Eugene O'Neill story of the dysfunctional Tyrone family is set on one day in August of 1912. The father is a miserly actor, the mother is a morphine addict, and the brother is a drunk. The Iceman cometh. And we're looking for a long day's journey into night. Continuing in stage classics, it's the story of the younger family who attempt to move into an all-white Chicago suburb but are confronted by discrimination. Name this first play by an African-American woman to be performed on Broadway. Raisin in the Sun. That is correct. It's narrated by Tom Wingfield, who supports his mother Amanda and his handicapped sister Laura, who lives in a fantasy world with her fragile collection. Named this 1944 Tennessee Williams drama. The Glass Menagerie. That is correct. Also by Tennessee Williams, this play centers on a fight between Gooper and Brick over the estate of their father, Big Daddy Pollitt. Brick's wife Maggie has a nickname that is part of the title of this 1955 drama. Cat on a hot tin roof. That is correct. Well done. It wasn't straight by so. Okay, one category remains. We're heading back to Flushing. Ben, in consultation with your teammates, please identify the women by the following descriptions in the category of female firsts. This woman is considered to be the first child born to English settlers in America on Roanoke Island in 1587. Virginia Dare. That's correct. She was the first woman hanged by the United States government for her association with the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Mary Surratt. That is correct. <laughs> this Michigander was the first woman inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. Oh, Madonna. Madonna. No, we're looking for Aretha Franklin. Oh. <laughs> she was the, pardon me, the, she was the first woman to lead either party in Congress as minority leader of the House of Representatives in 2003. Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is correct. Well done. <laughs> wow, fantastic first half to the game. You can see that we are in the final game because these are two red hot teams. Let's look at our scores. Novi, you currently trail with 120. Flushing, you have a lead going into the break of 150. This is anybody's contest. We're going to take a quick break. You want to find out who we're crowning our 2009 champion? Stick around.
We have uh, one heck of a game going on here. These are clearly two well-coached and well-drilled teams. And we are playing for our 2009 High School Challenge Championship. So we're going to start our one-on-one -on -one by spelling out the word championship. Identify the following, which will begin with successive letters of the word championship. In the one-on-one, -on -one, we work our seating order from the outside in, so I want everyone to set their buzzers down except for Thomas from Flushing and Sudarshan from uh, Novi. Let's begin. Spelling championship beginning with a letter C. It was a far, far better thing for him to replace Charles Darnay on the guillotine in Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. Sidney Carton. The letter is H. It's the greatly slowed metabolism and low body temperature. Uh, flushing, Thomas. Hibernation. Hibernation's correct. <laughs> letter A, the condition in which red blood cells are reduced in number or volume, or, oh, we need to clear the board, please. Go ahead, Sidarshan. Anemia? Anemia is correct, yes. <laughs> we'll clear the board again, and we'll move in one position. Ani and Matt, buzzers in hand, please. We're spelling championship, we are on the letter M. This Norwegian painter and printmaker made crucial contributions to the modern art movement through works such as The Scream. Novi, Ani. Munch. Edvard Munch, Munch is correct, yes. Uh, the letter is P. She's the free-thinking girl with red braids who lives in Flushing, Matt. Pippi Longstocking. Pippi Longstocking is correct, yes. Okay, letter I. It's the 1859 Alfred Lord Tennyson account of Arthurian legend. Letter I, Idols of the King. Okay, moving into the team captains squaring off in the one-on-one. -on -one. Andrew and Ben, buzzers in hand, please. We're spelling championship. We are on O, this private liberal arts college in Ohio. Uh, Novi, Andrew. Oberlin. Oberlin's correct, yes. The letter is N. It's a fundamental particle with no electric charge. Uh, Novi, Andrew. Neutron? No. No. Uh, continuing the question here for Ben. Uh, with little or no mass and a spin value of one half integer. Ben? Neutrino. Neutrino is what we needed there, yes. <laughs> letter S. It's the name Charles Lindbergh gave to the plane he piloted. Flushing Ben. The Spirit of St. Louis. That is correct, yes. Moving into the anchor position, Stephanie and Amit. Letter H, it's the ancient name of the narrow strait between the peninsula of Gallipoli in Europe and the mainland of Turkey in Asia. Hellespont. Letter I, it's the polypeptide hormone that regulates blood glucose flushing, Amit. Insulin. Insulin's correct, yes, blood glu glucose levels. The letter is P, uh, final word, letter in championship. Most of the city suffers from extreme poverty and lack of basic public services, and yet it is still the capital of Haiti. Uh, Novi, Stephanie. Port-au-Prince. Port-au-Prince is correct, yes. Okay, we have three of our four rounds completed in this championship game. Let's update our scores. Novi, you currently trail with 160. Flushing, you are in the lead with 200. However, we are entering the double time round. We are go giving out double the points. That's 20 points for every correct response. I caution you players, 10 points is taken away for every incorrect response. So be careful where you buzz in because there are penalties. Let's do as many of these as we have time left in the game. Let's begin. In our current economic climate, you need more and more of this every day. What is this security pledged as Flushing Ben? Credit. Not what we're looking for. Continuing the question for Novi. Pledged as a guarantee for repayment of a loan. And Novi, Stephanie. Collateral. Collateral it is, yes. It resembles most other cavies in being stout, short-legged, and about 10 inches in length. What is this popular pet and research animal? Uh, Novi, Andrew. Chimpanzee. Not what we're looking for. Chance for a swing there, Flushing. Ben. A rat. No, we're looking for a guinea pig. Moving on. It will be 40 years in July since Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon as part of which Apollo mission? Flushing, Ben. Apollo 11. That is correct. The words translate as, we alone. What is this nationalistic political party in Ireland? Sinn Féin. Continuing, name the Roman order and statesman who authored the Philippics, a series of attacks on Mark Antony. Cicero. He was the son of Jupiter and Juno, who, some say, was thrown into the sea by his mother. 
Uh, Flushing Ben. Neptune. Not who we're looking for. Chance for a big swing. Let me complete the question for Novi. Was thrown into the sea by his mother. Name this Roman god of fire. Andrew. Vulcan. Correct. <laughs> On Jer uh, January 20th, 2008, Chief Justice John Roberts misplaced what word in the presidential flushing, Ben? Faithfully. Faithfully correct. Presidential oath of office. What name is given to the point at which an orbiting body is closest to the body that it is orbiting? Perigee. Name the Shakespearean title character who proclaimed, my horse, my horse, my kingdom for a horse. Richard III. They range from about .04 inches to more than 50 feet long. The head bears suckers and hooks for attaching to the liver or digestive tract. Uh, Novi Andrew. Tapeworm. Tapeworm's correct, yes. In classical mythology, it was the planet Venus, or, pardon me, in classical mythology, it was the planet Venus, or morning star at dawn, personified as a male figure. From the Latin for light bearer, it became regarded as the name for Satan before his fall. Uh, Flushing Ben. Lucifer. That is correct. <laughs> the biggest source of hydroelectric, pow hydroelectric power in the United States, what, uh, Flushing Ben. The Hoover Dam. Uh, no, not what we're looking for. Continuing the question for Novi of hydroelectric power in the United States, what is the largest U.S. river to flow into the Pacific? Andrew. Columbia River. That is correct. Less than a minute remains in the game. Name the 19, uh, clear the board please. Name the 1927 hyphenated pact in which the United States and France agreed to renounce war as an instrument of national policy. Novi, Stephanie. Keller Bryad. Pact. Say again. Kellogg Bryad. Yes. That is correct, yes. The name's the same. It's a system of notes uh, definitely related to each other based on a particular note. It's a low-lying -ly island or reef, especially off the Florida coast. What's the word? Uh, Flushing Ben. Key. Key is correct. <laughs> he was made a brigadier general in 1775 and fought with distinction at Saratoga, but he is best remembered for uh, Flushing Ben. Benedict Arnold. That is correct. Cineol smells like camphor and stimulates blood circulation. Maybe that's why koala bears prefer the gum trees. Uh, Novi, Andrew. Eucalyptus. That is correct. <laughs> the name of this constellation, constellation in the zodiac comes from the myth that Zeus abducted Europa in this form. What is this bunch of bull? Uh, Novi, Stephanie. A cow. Not what we're looking for. A chance to, for a swing here, Flushing. <laughs> Taurus. Named after a village on, on Egypt's Mediterranean coast, this World War II battle ended Montgomery's victory. Uh, Flushing Matt. El Alamein. The Battle of El Alamein is correct. And that's it. Uh, wow. We have uh, an incredible finish. It came down to the very last question answered correctly. Nova, you wound up at 260. Congratulations, Flushing, pulling out a victory with 280 points. Well done. And now to award our trophies, I'd like to uh, introduce somebody without whom we would not be able to do this show. He founded High School Challenge. He writes all of our questions. He is Michigan Television's own Jim Gaver. Jim, take it away. Thank you very much, Jimmy, and uh, not only for that introduction, but also for the fine job you've done the entire season. Jimmy Rhodes. Well, as Jimmy mentioned at the start of the show, uh, Novi is our defending champions, and uh, you've shown yourselves very well this season. We're very, very proud of you. 32 teams. Uh, from about a 40, 50 mile radius um, around our studios here, started this competition a number of weeks ago. And uh, a number of them could have been here, but these two teams are. And uh, they both deserve a round of applause. And now I'd like to call up uh, Novi coach Rob Baker, if I might. Rob, good to see you again. You should be very proud of these teams. I sure am. They work uh, hard, and obviously both these teams are very talented and uh, did a great job today. Well, it's my pleasure to present you this year's uh, Championship High School Challenge Runner-Up Trophy. Thank you so Congratulations. much. Congratulations. And now, if I could have uh, Karen Slino and Greg Hummel come up from Flushing High School.
Karen, I know you've been here many years. I used to have to ask you every year how to pronounce your name, but I finally got it. I know, Jim. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, you've shown your school in our area up very, very well, and it's my pleasure to present you with uh, the 2009 High School Challenge Championship Trophy. Congratulations. <laughs> And with these folks up here, I'd like to take just a minute for one more round of applause, and that is uh, for these kids and all of the kids who have taken part this year. They couldn't do it without the dedication of their parents, their teachers, and the support of the administration and their schools to show off the academic talents of these fine teams. And we at Michigan Television are proud to be a part of that. So let's hear it for all the coaches throughout the year. And now on behalf of Jimmy Rhodes and the entire staff here at Michigan Television, I'm Jim Gaver. We hope to see you next year. Everybody got their buzzers? We're ready? All right, here we go. Okay, here, this is for all the marbles. Literally, and I don't have any marbles, so it's for nothing. Here we go. This Indian name means I fish on my side, you fish on your side, and nobody fishes in the middle. According to the Library of Congress, it is the longest lake name in the United States. What is it? Stephanie from Novi. Okie Toby. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Uh, chance for you to pick it up, Flushing. Okay, that means that I have to say this lake name. This is in honor of Jim Gaber. The name of the lake is Lake Chargog Agog Manchog Agog Chalbun Agun Gamog. Huh? Huh? You didn't think I could do it, Gamer? Ha! Huh? Bring it! Purchase your own copy of High School Challenge, send $15 by check or money order to the address shown on the screen, or call 810-762-3028. Don't forget to include the names of the two teams you would like on DVD.